Welcome to Monday Morning Joe, a quick hitting coffee talk style series in severe asthma. I'm Dr. Ray Panettieri, professor of medicine at Robert Wood Johnson Medical School and vice chancellor for the Institute of Translational Medicine at Rutgers in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Today, we're going to discuss the underlying mechanisms of severe asthma, including the roles of alarmants upstream of the inflammatory cascades. Before we begin, remember to subscribe to Exchange CME YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss new episodes in this series. Okay, let's get started. Now the epithelium is always been thought of simply a barrier function, keeping the outside outside and preventing it from coming inside. It is, though, the first piece of a sequence of immune responses. Think of it as an innate immune organ. It does far more than simply walls keeping the outside outside. It can modulate airway inflammation, bronchial hyperresponsiveness, and it can promote intermittent airway obstruction. Now, how this is done is through a variety of contributing factors. Allergens can affect the epithelial function as well as toxicants like ozone, sulfur dioxide that then signal to the epithelium to alter structural cell function like goblet cell hypertrophy, hyperplasia, cilia dysfunction. It can also disrupt the tight junctions between the epithelium causing a leaky epithelium, allowing chemokines, cytokines, and mediators to affect structural slow cells below. Now, how is this done? Well, the toxicants and the injuries that I just mentioned, allergens, viruses, smoke, and bacteria, affect the epithelium to induce alarm and secretion. Now, alarm and secretion, there's three in the human airways that are known, IL-33, IL-25, and TSLP. These alarmants then signal to structural cells to alter function. They can modulate the eosinophil in classic high T2 inflammatory responses. It can modulate IL-5 function on the eosinophil as well as IL-4 and IL-13. These mediators and cytokines can then affect airway hyperresponsiveness and responsiveness to beta agonists. That is thought of as high T2. That is allergy-driven, IL-5, IL-4, and IL-13. Now, as important, TSLP, as well as the other alarmants, can affect the low T2 responses by modulating ILC function as well as other T cell subsets. Collectively, the alarmants upstream from T2 inflammation high and T2 low inflammation can modulate structural cell function. Now, what is airway hyperresponsiveness? It is an exaggerated shortening of airway smooth muscle causing the luminal diameter to tighten and that gets tightened in asthmatics at lower concentrations of toxicants and irritants. Airway hyperresponsiveness defines asthma. It is the sine qua non of asthma. So what also induces airway hyperresponsiveness? Well, you got it, TSLP. TSLP can modulate actually airway hyperresponsiveness in part through its modulation and secretion of IL, IL-13, and IL-4 effects on airway smooth muscle. Airway hyperresponsiveness can also induce a remodeling lesion characterized by airway smooth muscle mass increases, hypertrophy, hyperpasia, goblet cell hypertrophy and hyperplasia, and vascular permeability. All told, this vicious cycle of AHR can induce, can induce structural changes in the airway, promoting and evoking an irreversible airflow obstruction in asthma. 
So in summary, what's the takeaway? What, what do I need to know? Well, number one, epithelium is more than barrier function. Think of it as an immune organ, an immune organ who modulates the function of structural cells through TSLP, IL-33, and IL-25 IL secretion, the alarmants. As important, these alarmants can also propagate, orchestrate, and perpetuate T2 high and T2 low inflammation, as well as the currency of the definition of asthma, airway hyperresponsiveness. TSLP, amongst other alarmants, are central players in the signaling of AHR and airway inflammation. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to check back frequently for new episodes in this series on Exchange CME YouTube page. You can also visit exchangecme.com for free access to other CME programming in a variety of therapeutic areas. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next episode of Monday Morning Joe.